Well, amen. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Thursday night uh, midweek. It's funny that we call it midweek. I know it's because we used to meet, really, midweek. We used to meet Wednesday evenings, right? Because that's midweek, right? That's the middle of the week. Um, but you know what? I'm grateful because even though it's Thursday, we still get to meet together. Uh, and we still call it midweek. So it's all good. So last week, uh, I talked to uh, everybody about Jesus' command for us to love one another. But he said, as he has loved us. And just to recap for the first two points last week, we talked about uh, Jesus gave us many examples. And in two of the ways we learned last week was loving others by encouraging them. And the second point was loving others by praying for them. Because we learned that if you study it out biblically, to love is mostly action, right? It's action. We do love by action. You can tell somebody you love them. Blaine probably tells Eve every single day how much he loves her. But sometimes he got to show her, you know what I mean? Like them flowers or write a nice little card or a little letter, a little note, you know, just to remind her how much he really loves her and how much he appreciates her and what she does for him. You heard him mention in his sermon, she raised Derek and he made that point twice. <laughs> and there are those of you that know Derek, you can, you can follow along with what Blaine was saying. But no, Derek's a great kid. I'm not picking on Derek. He's great. He's awesome. I love that kid. Um, so today what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to move through to the next three uh, examples of how we can love one another as Jesus had called us to. And our third point it is, we love one another the way that Jesus had, by acting humbly toward others. It does not boast, it is not proud. Loving others means putting them above yourself. A, quo a quote from C.S. Lewis reads, Humility is not thinking less of you, but thinking of you less. You can act humbly towards others by listening to them, not blaming them for your mistakes, accepting their critique or reproach, receiving their help, considering them, showing interest in them, and not thinking or acting like you are better or more important than they are. Jesus hum humbled himself to become human and die on the cross. Philippians 2.8. He was humble toward his earthly parents and obeyed them. Luke 2.51. He never exalted himself. He listened to others' concerns and always thought of them more. Ephesians 5.21 says, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Philippians 2.3 says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. And in 1 Peter 5.5, 5, reads, All of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes who? The proud. But he shows favor to the humble. Correct. So humble. Hum act humbly toward others. That can be challenging sometimes, right? It can be really, really challenging. Who do you, who are some people or who, examples of who you might find that to be the most challenging for you? What, who are some people? What's that? His neighbor, his neighbor. What, does he have a dog that likes to use your front lawn a lot? I, ha I have one of those neighbors. That's, that's a little annoying. <laughs> Who else? Who else would be awful hard to be like, express humility toward them? Your, your siblings? 
<laughs> yeah, okay, your siblings. It might be a little bit of hard to hold back on them, right? You just kind of want to let them have it all the time, right? Who else would you say, Blaine? Your spouse. Your spouse. <sighs> Not me. Not, oh, yeah. <laughs> Not Blaine. <laughs> Not Blaine. Nope. But yeah, he says, you know, if you want to show your love to somebody, act humbly toward them. Point number four, be hospitable to everyone. It does not dishonor others. You love like Christ when you don't discriminate, but accept everyone regardless of their background. Welcome others that may come from different races, political views, economic status, etc., and treat them with kindness and respect. Jesus welcomed everyone. He played with children, valued women, interacted with Samaritans, had dinner with tax collectors, touched lepers, and so many more. He still welcomes anyone who will come to him today, regardless of their background, and showers them with his love. Romans 12.10 says, Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Romans 15.7, Accept one another. Then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. And 1 Peter 4, 9, it says, offer hospitality to another without, can anybody tell me what that last word is? Grumbling. Yeah, grumbling, who said that? Somebody said that, somebody got that. Yeah, <laughs> thanks bro. Yeah, offer hospitality to others without grumbling. Let me tell you guys, uh, when, I, when I was thinking about this, when I was putting this together and I was thinking about who this reminded me of, this particular point, be hospitable to everybody. Um, certainly, uh, you know, I've seen this time and time again uh, with the lions, I gotta tell you, with the lions, but somebody that really stood out to me was Mary. You know, I thought about how Mary, the way she greets people uh, at the door, you know, she goes around and she, she makes sure that everybody gets the communion. Um, she really, really reaches out to, to serve people and to really um, show great hospitality. And of course, that's why she's such a good fit for the hospitality uh, part of the services, right? Uh, so she's really, really great at that. So I have a challenge. I'm going to have two challenges tonight for the week. And actually, when I'm going to make it easy. I'm going to have you, you decide for yourself which challenge you you want to work on this week within the next seven days. So the challenge for this particular point, and one of the two challenges, is invite someone you've not had over your house yet, but it probably said, I'd really love to have them over for dinner sometime, but just never got around to it. Invite them over to your house for dinner in the next seven days. So that's challenge number one, so that you can think about which one you want to go with. And this will lead me into my, the final point for tonight, which would be uh, point number five. Remember, there was 10 altogether. But point number five is serve others with love. It is not self-seeking. To love others is to serve them. You love others when you do things for them without expecting anything in return. Things you may not like to do, and that will, that will cost or inconvenience you. There's no love without service. Jesus said he came to serve others in Mark 10, 45. He fulfilled it throughout his life by the, num by the numerous miracles he performed, ministering to the sick, allowing himself to be interrupted to help others, etc., he showed his most significant act of love and service on the cross when he died for us. John 13, 14 says, Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, 
you also should wash one another's feet. Galatians 5.13, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. And 1 Peter 4.10 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Jesus calls us to serve. Now, when I thought about this challenge, I was thinking to challenge you to have somebody over their ha- over your house again, but to come for a foot washing. And I thought, yeah, yeah there's probably some people that are going to really winged out by that one. I said, no, there ain't no way I'm touching so-and-so's feet, uh, especially if you haven't seen them or don't know where those feet have been. So instead, what I decided to do was uh, the challenge is to ask somebody brother or sister, hey, what can I do for you in the next seven days that can really help you or to serve you? So ask somebody how you can serve them in the next seven days. And so to follow up with last week's uh, commitments, I asked that, you know, the first one was loving others by encouraging them. And Kind of laid it out there like every day for the, le- for the next seven days, call somebody and encourage them or send them a text or bring the- get them a coffee or whatever. I'm not going to ask who did the assignment, like who lived up to the challenge, but I want to find out who, by show of hands, who got encouragement. It wasn't about the people getting the encouragement, by the way. It was about us thinking outside of ourselves, thinking about others, right? So who, anybody here got encouragement? I know I got encouragement, I got text. So, cool. So I'm glad to see that people were getting encouraged. And then of course, the prayer change. We, we, we did the prayer change. Does anybody here wanna share like something they remember from the prayer train and then maybe hearing like, wow, you know, God really answered this prayer. Did anybody, did anybody have that experience this past week? Okay, so, uh, if you guys want to go ahead and continue with those challenges from last week, that's awesome. But the two new challenges for this week is to have somebody, and you can choose one or the other, to have somebody over your house who you thought like, well, you know what, I really would love to have that person over, and I never got around to doing it. Let's make it happen these next seven days. Or talking with somebody and saying, hey, brother or sister, how can I serve you in a great way? How can I serve you? in a way that will make a huge difference because I really want to show my love to you. Guys, uh, break up in your groups. You guys can talk about the points tonight and share with one another how you guys are, what, or what you guys are thinking about the points. And then I'll come back and I'll close this out in a final prayer.